Hello everyone. Welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a locus problem with complex numbers. What does that mean? We are given this inequality, the absolute value of z minus 2 is less than 3 and greater than 0. In other words, it's between 0 and 3. And we're going to try to find the z values that satisfy this inequality. Of course, it's kind of, you can also consider this as a compound inequality or two separate inequalities that are combined. No matter how you look at it, we're going to be able to solve it. So if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I go over the basics of complex numbers. And if you like algebra, number theory, and geometry, maybe a little bit of trigonometry problems, go ahead and check out my other channel, CyberMath, Cyber with an S. Great, so to be able to solve this locus problem, locus problems are so special, at the end, you should be getting a bunch of numbers and they are usually plotted on a coordinate plane. That's why we're going to go ahead and replace z with x plus yi. No offense, a plus bi, it's the name of this channel still and most of the time we use it, for, but for locus problems, uh, we'd like to use this version. Okay, no big deal. You can always start with a plus bi and switch it around. So what happens if you replace z with that? Let's find out. So we're going to get x plus yi minus 2. We're going to take the absolute value and then squeeze it between 0 and 3. To be able to do that, we, we need to consider the definition. What is the absolute value of a complex number? If you have a plus bi, you know that the absolute value is the square root of a squared plus b squared because on the complex plane or the argon plane as you know from Pythagorean theorem this is a plus b i and then you're going to go ahead and look at the distance from zero which is from the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared square root of that and of course there is an angle which is the argument but we don't need to worry about it luckily in this case we're only focused on the absolute value so by definition this becomes the square root of x minus 2 squared plus y squared and then square root of the whole thing. We want this to be between 0 and 3, so how do you handle that? Again, you can do it separately or just do all at once. Doesn't matter, no big deal. I find this a little bit easier. So, first of all, we want to get rid of the radical, right? So let's go ahead and square everything. I'd like to say two sides, but there are three sides to it square, square, and square, okay? And since our expression is positive, we can square it. Otherwise, think about something like something between negative 5 and negative 3. When you square everything, you're going to get a false inequality. Make sense? So we need to make sure that when we're doing squaring both sides, it is done correctly. And in this case, it's, in this case, it's okay to do. When you square zero, obviously you're gonna get the same thing. One of those special numbers whose square equals itself, right? And there's another one, can you think of it? So we get the expression without the radical in the middle and then three squared is equal to nine. This still doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Well, if you know a little bit of analytical geometry, it should. So let me go ahead and tell you what this means. First of all, you can think of this as the equation of some analytical shape. But what is that, right? So think of it this way. We have two points in the coordinate plane. One of them is x comma y. By the way, point x comma y represents our number z, right? Does it? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> because I was kind of stuck on this one. And then we have another point, 2 comma 0. And guess what we want to do? We want to look at the distance between these two points. And obviously, you can plot these, right? Uh, x comma y is just going to be generic, so it can be anywhere. doesn't matter, no big deal, but, you know, 2 comma 0 will be here. So this is 2 comma 0. And x comma y, let's just say it's here, okay? So that's 2 comma 0, and we're looking at the distance between two points, right? So how do we handle that? Well, from Pythagorean theorem, again, right? Look at the distance. The distance is just going to be the distance in x value squared plus the distance in y value squared. But since our point is given as 2 comma 0, its y coordinate is 0, and this is just going to be an x, and this is going to be a y. So this is going to be x minus 2, this is going to be y minus 0, or just y. 
And from Pythagorean theorem, if you call that distance d, d is just going to be, or d squared will be x minus 2 squared plus y squared. Wow, that's kind of interesting. That's exactly what we have, right? Exactly. But what does that mean then? It means the distance squared. So in other words, we want the distance between these two points to be, when squared, greater than zero. Of course, the distance is always greater than zero. And especially when squared, right? And it, we want it to be less than nine. What does that mean? It just means that we get a circle. So here's another way to look at it. We graph this, which is, by the way, conforms to this form, which is the equation of a circle with radius r and center h comma k, okay? So this is the equation of a circle. If you knew that, this would be pretty easy, automatic, right? So in other words, this is the equation of a circle with center 2 comma 0. Let's go ahead and graph that. 2 comma 0 centered. And its radius is 3 squared or just 3, right? So we're going to go up 3 units this way and 3 units every way, basically. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So our circle is basically going to go through all these points. But by the way, that was incorrect because it's diagonal distance. But anyways, you hopefully you get the idea. Three units every way. We should go like this, I mean, right? One, two, three. So we're going to go ahead and connect these dots. And that's going to give us our circle. Of course, with uh, notability, I think you can make a better circle if you really insist. Well, it's kind of not bad, right? <laughs> it's okay. So this is our circle, but notice that we are we want our circle equation to be less than nine. So we want the basically the radius to be less than three. In other words, you're kind of looking at the inside of the circle. Okay, it doesn't include the circle, and I'm going to take care of that. But what about the other side? Well, I told you this is already satisfied. You just don't want this to be zero. And guess what? Unless x is two and y is zero, this is not gonna happen. So we kinda need to take out the center from here. Oh, oops, I hope that doesn't erase a whole bunch of things. So center excluded, right? The center, that one point, but everything else in between is included. But also you need to make sure that there, this is a dotted line. Why? Because the circle itself is not going to be included. So in other words, the inner region for the circle will be the solution. Which means if you pick any z, any point from inside the circle, not the center, right? Then it's going to satisfy. So all these infinitely many complex numbers will satisfy our inequality. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.